What's up guys, E-Drone here, and today we're going to be reviewing the Diatone Cube. Stay tuned. Banggood has kindly sent me the Diatone Cube to review for you. It took a long time to get here and there wasn't a battery included, so that's why I apologize for the late review. Uh, but nevertheless, I have the drone and I have the battery. I'll put links down in the description for some recommended batteries for this guy. We're gonna go ahead and take a look at it on the bench, take a look at all the specs and everything, and then we're gonna take it out and do some flight testing. At the end of this video, we'll go ahead and go over the things that I like about it and some of the things that I don't like about it. Taking a look here at the GTB229 from Diatone, Go ahead and open this up. We are greeted with some Diatone stickers. We get one set of HQ 65 millimeter propellers. This is the one and a half millimeter shafts. We get a bag of some spare parts. We get a buzzer board, an extra battery strap, some zip ties, some extra hardware, some extra standoffs, some of these receiver uh, connector wires. Here is the Diatone Cube GTB229. And you can see that they have clearly uh, put some instructions in here in the box uh, about the where you get the instruction manual, what version this flight controller is, and also to let you know that the VTX comes uh, locked. So we'll have to go ahead and unlock that. So it's locked, currently locked at 25 milliwatts, but this particular VTX will go up to 400 milliwatts. I'm really excited about this toothpick guys. This is definitely a premium toothpick and let's go over the components that they use in this particular toothpick that makes it so premium. So the camera we're working with is the Runcam Nano 2. So a nice Runcam camera in there. We are using for VTX the TBS Nano Pro 32. So this is actually a TBS Nano Unify Pro VTX that's going to go all the way up to 400 milliwatts. That's really impressive. The flight controller is the Mamba F411 Nano. The SCs are the Mamba 134 Nano. The motors are the Mamba 1103. These are the 10,000 kV versions. They also make different variations on the kV depending on what you want to run. This particular toothpick is designed for 2S. They recommend a 2S550. Look, take a look at this frame. This is what makes this very innovative. This frame is extremely lightweight. However, it is incredibly rigid. I can't even hardly bend this thing. It has so much strength. And when you first take it out of the box and you start to feel it, it actually kind of feels like a metal at first, but it's not. This is carbon fiber, and it, the way it's cut is just extremely strong and rigid. This frame is definitely not gonna be breaking anytime soon. You can see that the motors themselves are directly soldered to the ESC. And man, did they do a phenomenal job on those solder joints. Nice, so nice shiny solder joints. You can also see here at the front of the craft is your micro USB port to plug into Betaflight. And you can see that each indiv individual stack is isolated by three rubber o-rings that's going to create that nice dampening that nice anti-vibration that's going to create for a nice flight experience the canopy is a tpu mount and i really do like this mount you can see the camera is highly adjustable it has a very very wide variety of angles that you can adjust this to because of this particular 3d printed mount and i love the vtx cable management here in the back it keeps it up high, out of the prop line, so you're not gonna be getting your VTX cable prop struck. I really do love the design of this, and this was a, just another reason I really wanted to get my hands on one of these and test it out. See the battery mounts underneath, you get a nice diatone strap here with the metal buckle. They also give you a spare in the bag. This particular uh, toothpick does not come with a receiver, so we're gonna need to go ahead and install a receiver However, you can see there's two holes in the TPU mount here to mount your receiver antennas, and there's plenty of space underneath this canopy to put your receiver. Just make sure you heat shrink. This cable coming off the side is supposed to be 
Diatone's universal cable system. So basically, you're supposed to be able to take uh, any of these cables that they provide you, plug it into here, and go ahead and get right into your receiver. However, this particular uh, cable here is set up for the RXSR, FR Sky. Um, with the XM Plus, we're going to have to direct solder anyway. They do give you a buzzer in the bag, which comes with a little plug connector that you would have to solder up. Because of the weight and size of this, I'm not going to be using this particular buzzer. You can also have the, uh, the motor's ESC set to beacon, which is very nice. Now, the props it comes with are the nice HQ props, and they are push-on style props. However, if you look here at the motor, this motor does have the screw holes to use the uh, screw-on props. So if you have an issue with the props keep falling off or keep popping off, you can go always switch over to the screw-on style props. So that's a really nice universal design here. And this particular quadcopter without the battery weighs 44 grams. So extremely lightweight. This is going to give us a nice flight performance because of the uh, lightweight frame and how light this craft is. And we're running on 2S motors with high KV on bi-blade props. This is going to be a really nice flight experience. The props are two and a half inch props, and the wheelbase of this particular uh, toothpick is 105 millimeters from motor to motor. Now, in order to put the props on, it's really quite simple. You're going to choose the correct prop, and these props are going to spin traditionally. So, we're going to push this prop on like this. Go ahead and push it down so it's locked in. This prop's going to be spinning counterclockwise. And on this motor, we're going to use the opposite prop here with a leading edge here on the back. Go ahead and push this on. Banggood is having a blowout 13th anniversary sale. So I'm going to put a link down in the description for this item with a whole bunch of coupons from Banggood for their big blowout sale. So make sure you check that out. This is one of the biggest sales they're going to have of the year, and they have ridiculously low pricing on a lot of your favorite items. Uh, and they are affiliate links, and it would greatly help out the channel. So anything you click on down below, anything you order through the affiliate links, and I'll get a little bit of commission for it, which would help out the channel. I greatly appreciate it. So thank you so much for that. Now we're going to go ahead and get the receiver installed. So in the little package, you'll find a connector that goes from basically a four pin to a three pin connector. Once that's plugged in, we're going to go ahead and cut this end off and directly solder these three wires to our XM Plus receiver. Here is the XM Plus receiver. We're going to solder to these three pads. So we have the S bus, we have our 5 volt, and we have our ground. Okay, I've got the receiver plugged in. Now we need to go ahead and bind the receiver to the transmitter. I'm going to show you how we do that real quick. So on the radio, you're going to go over the menu. If you have a, a Tyrannus QX7 or any kind of Tyrannus type radio. And you're going to page over to the bind, BND. This is going to put the transmitter in binding mode. Now we have to choose, do we want channel 1 through 8 or 9 through 16? I'm going to do channel 9 through 16 with telemetry on, since we're using the XM Plus receiver. Transmitter is going to start chirping. Now while that's chirping, see right here on the receiver, there's a little tiny button. Now we're going to need to push this button down and plug in our power, and that will put the receiver into binding mode. Try to press it with my finger. Okay, I've got the button pushed in. I'm going to go ahead and plug in the battery. Okay, you can see that we have a solid green light on the XM Plus receiver, meaning that we are properly bound to transmitter. Before we put the receiver in the body, we need to go ahead and add our heat shrink. So the easiest way to do this, I believe, is going to be to feed these wires up through first then tuck in the receiver, then we'll add the antenna straws. I've got the receiver tucked in the body here, and it's just, just enough room, perfect fit. 
Now I've got the antennas coming out the sides. So now we're just going to add our antenna straws so we keep these out of the prop line. We've got our antenna straws installed for the receiver wires. I don't think it looks bad at all. Just going to keep them out of the props. Now we can go ahead and get this set up on Betaflight. Here in the Betaflight configurator, most of everything has already been set up for you. But we are going to need to do a couple things to get this quadcopter ready to fly. And go over here and already see that we have all our settings uh, in the configuration tab pretty much set up. Go to the receiver tab and get your channel mapping correct. Uh, I had to choose the spectrum to get mine to work. Then you're going to need to go to the modes tab to set up your switches. And I want to put a link up in the corner to show a video on how to get that done. Uh, it would just make this video too long. So make sure you check out that link if you want to know how to set up your switches in your modes tab. Let's go ahead and take a flight. Okay, we're going to go ahead and get ready to do a line of sight flight right here in the back. You can see it's a small area, which is perfect for this type of uh, drone here, the toothpick size. And we're just going to do a line of sight, little angle mode flight, and then we'll do a FPV flight. Lots of throttle there. Oh, yeah. Very stable. This is an angle mode. Ton of punch. You give it just a little bit of throttle and it's just gone. Feels very floaty as well. Everything's stock. Stock tune. Stock pids, stock rates. And you can see it catches itself really nicely. Let's go ahead and do a horizon mood. We can do some flips. Nice. Very nimble. Handles very good in angle mood. It recovers very nicely on the throttle as well. And this is the 10,000 kV on 2S. Feels incredibly responsive. All right, let's go ahead and do a FPV flight with this little guy. All right, gonna go ahead and do the FPV flight right here in the back. And first thing you'll notice is the camera itself is very clear. I was very surprised and happy with the camera quality itself. Even in the transitions from the sunlight to the shade, you can see everything absolutely perfectly. It has very good uh, image detail, a good wide dynamic range, and the colors are really not that bad. Um, the angle is a little bit less than I would like. I would like a little bit wider of an angle. But, nevertheless, it still gives you plenty to work with. Uh, flying here in close proximity is where this toothpick really shines. This is something that's quiet. It's not going to annoy other people. And it's incredibly fun to fly. And it maneuvers very well. Now, everything is stock on this flight. Stock rates, stock pids. And the rates are a little bit too fast for me. Uh, but I'm able to fly just fine. And able to get through some really tight and nice corners. And it handles so much more like a three to five inch quad. It does not have those whoop characteristics that you would come to expect from a quadcopter this size. Acro flying with this thing is an absolute breeze. It, tw it twists, it turns, it flips. You can sit here and just do uh, all kinds of maneuvers and it recovers very well. And you can really get some speed on this guy. I do some speed runs and you can just because of the size of it, it just makes it so much more robust and a lot easier to get in tighter places. And However, I will say you definitely don't want to get this hung up in a tree because it's going to be incredibly difficult to get it out of a tree um, because of the size of it. But man, is this thing just a blast to fly, um, especially in close proximity. The next flight we're going to do, uh, I'm going to do a little bit more open environment just to show you that this thing you know, it has a wide variety of applications. You can fly this thing in tight quarters. You can fly it in wide open spaces. Even with a little bit of breeze, it didn't affect this quadcopter at all. Video transmitter on this flight is locked at 25 milliwatts, and I had no issue with video whatsoever. Uh, I'm using the Fat Shark Dominator HD3s 
with the rapid fire with two omnidirectional antennas. And I had no issues with video. Even behind the brick wall, I still had plenty of good video on 25 milliwatt. On the second flight, I did unlock the VTX and go up to 400 milliwatt. And I'm gonna put a link up in the corner to show you uh, a video on how to unlock your TBS uh, Unify VTXs so you can get higher milliwatts and uh, unlock the other channels. But man, this thing was just absolute joy to fly. I, and in flight times were really good. You'll see down the fly time down there, you'll see that uh, we get significantly decent flight times, especially on the 10,000 kV motors. Keep that in mind also. These are 10,000 kV on 2S and we're still, you know, able to get three to four minute flight times, no problems whatsoever. And, um, you know, I highly do recommend this quadcopter, guys. It, yes, it is premium, but for the price, you're getting a, a very reliable and rugged platform. This thing just checks all the boxes. Great video, great flight characteristics, great out-of-the-box feel. You're really not going to be disappointed. Okay, here's the next flight we're going to do in a little bit more of an open area here just to show you that, you know, you don't have to just fly this thing in close proximity. You can stretch this thing out. You can go between trees, and you can really just see where it shines. Um, even when the wind picked up, I had no issues with control whatsoever. Still able to do uh, nice maneuvers, nice yaw spins, nice flips and rolls, and it really split S's are no issue for this quadcopter whatsoever. And because of the size of it, you know, it's really fun to just fly in tight places that you normally wouldn't take a five inch. That's where I really had a lot of fun with this guy. But go ahead and enjoy the rest of this flight. I'm going to add some music for your entertainment. Then at the end of this video, I'll give you my final thoughts.
So as you can see, this thing is an absolute beast. It's very strong, incredibly fast, and very fun to fly. I'm gonna put a link down in the description as well as a coupon for this. Banggood is having a super blowout sale. Um, they're gonna be having sales come here and there, but anyway, I'm gonna put the coupon code down in the description. So make sure you check that out if you wanna get this guy. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe. More Diatone Cube videos to come on the channel, so stay tuned for that. And until next time, guys, thanks for watching. E-Drone, out.